The People's Democratic Party crisis deepens as reps urge Uche Sekundus to resign, while the national chairman himself reaches a deal to resolve the crisis in the party. And the sit-at-home order turns bloody as gunmen riot in Anambra and Imo states. This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anna Cole. The People's Democratic Party PDP caucus of the House of Representatives has called on its national chairman Uche Sekundus to resign from office to pave way for the resolution of the crisis rocking the party. Meanwhile, the People's Democratic Party PDP governors and the embattled national chairman of the party, Prince Uche Sekundus, appeared to have reached a new deal as part of efforts to resolve the crisis which engulfed its leadership and ensure lasting peace in the party. Well, joining us to discuss this is Equerry Local Government Chairman in River State, Samuel Wanosike, and former Executive Director of Public Affairs and Social Media to the Edo State Governor, Greg Ogiogwa. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Gentlemen, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes. Thank you for the opportunity. Okay. I'm going to start with you, Wanusike. Um, it's it's interesting what's happening um, in your party, and 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 I know that the PDP has been experiencing um, this crisis for a few um, you know months before the members of the BOT even decided that they were going to resign. But let's start with the fact that on Monday. Um, there was some form of protest for and against the chairman of the party. What exactly is the grouse of those who are saying that the, part, the chairman should resign? Well, uh, first of all, let me thank you for the opportunity of uh, um, joining this program. Um, I want to say clearly what's happening in our party is rebuilding a political party to position itself for the forthcoming assignment of retaking Nigeria from the misrule the All Progressive Congress have provided for the people of this nation. If you know and if you remember that the People's Democratic Party is the only political party that has structures in the 774 local governments in Nigeria. And so what Nigerians are expecting is a political party that has credible alternative to what is happening today. But that's democracy. And so the People's Democratic Party, as it's structured today, led by this current National Working Committee, has lost the confidence of even its members of the National Working Committee. You heard the information given by those who, who resigned their office from various positions. They said it clearly. And that is why the party leadership, the NEC and the BOT, had to come in to say, look, we need to save the only hope the Nigerians have come 2023 to rebuild this nation and make Nigeria the true giant that it is. We need to rebuild it. We need to bring it back. And that's why I thank God Almighty that all parties, including the national chairman, have seen reasons from those who had the, who had the mind that it's time to rebuild this party, to position the party to be able to produce a credible alternative. Nobody has any personal problem with uh, the national chairman of our party. No. What we're talking about is that, look, this time we need men and women who have what it takes to produce these credible alternatives that the APC has made Nigeria go through. When you say that nobody has a personal problem with the chairman of the party, there are those who are directly asking for him to resign, and this is not today. They've been asking him to resign. I'd like to quote directly members of the House of Representatives who are in the PDP. Uh, they had leveled several, several allegations against the chairman. They've accused him of not le having a clear roadmap, a blueprint, and, of course, um, not leading the party aright. Um, and if you say that this is not personal, the, the chairman is the chairman, he's the leader of the party, and if he's being accused of these things, it means that the people who are accusing him somewhat think that he's incapable of leading the party, and that makes, that sounds a bit personal to me. 
No, you cannot be personal because the, the party chairman is not sitting there as the national chairman as if it's his personal business alone. The most democratic party is a vehicle that is carrying millions of Nigerians to a destination. Like you know, as we talk, as we stand today, the constitution does not recognize uh, what they call it, uh, 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 what they call uh, people running without a political party. The, the constitution does not recognize the Independence. Uh, what the independent candidates. Yes, thank you very much. So everybody will hold, hold sway in this political party, and that political party is a vehicle that will bring you to acceptance and give you the credible opportunity for you to participate in a match that will be refereed by INEC. So what we are saying as a party, he has done his bit. But as we speak today, from what we have seen, even you that is asking this question, you know that the lapses and the errors of the APC is so enormous that any opposition political party at this point would have raised the tempo politically and Nigerians have started, would have started by now seeing what it is the government they are expecting to come in in 2023 would have been. Mm -hmm. So we as a political party, we are being practical. Nobody has any personal problem with anybody. What we are saying is that we need a political party that can be able to win election come 2023. Not a political party that's supposed to be standing as an opposition, yet members are drifting from this same political party to even the political party that's causing the trouble. So that's something absolutely wrong. And that's why the next and all every critical stakeholder, all those... Oh, I think we lost um, the connection who, there. Whose life, all those, all those whose life and programs and principles depend on the very people of the party, we never keep quiet. They will never keep silent. They must make sure that they have a verbal vehicle to be able to transmit or to position for 2023 and tell Nigerians the message they have. Okay, Mr. Ogyogwa, over to you. He is making a case that the party needs to move to a position where it can take out the APC, which is the party in power. But how do you take out the party in power when your main soldiers, your foot soldiers, have crossed over to another political party, the same party that you're trying to fight against or trying to take over power from? And they have gone there one way or the other to solidify the strength of that party. Shouldn't the party members, no matter how bad the situation is, stay within the party to grow it and form that formidable force to take out the APC, in, in the words of members of the PDP? Great question, ma'am. Fantastic question. Uh, you got it right there. But the thing about it is it's not the foot soldiers that are moving. It's the middle line management. You see, the foot soldiers are the ordinary people. You and I, I mean, not you and I, I don't know about you, but, you know, me, me and uh, my, my, and my, my brother on the other side who was speaking. People like us are the foot soldiers. We're the ones who go out uh, before the elections, on the elections, and after elections to secure the votes and to uh, secure... Uh, government in place. So we haven't moved. Uh, you have fortune seekers, political fortune seekers, who will waver and who will move from place to place uh, looking for what you would call a greener pasture, greener political pasture. So you, you find a lot of that and you find some of the governors, uh, especially within the PDP fold, who are thinking you know, uh, that some way or the other that they will get a presidential ticket, especially those from the Southeast, that they will get a presidential ticket in, in, two, in, in 2023. So, uh, I'm, so, so I'm sorry to that. speak over you, but I'm curious as to how these people in a space of a few days have become, um, you know, economic power seekers or whatever you call them. These were men that were, and women who were members of your board of trustees. These are the people that you gave the management of your party to, aside from the chairman, and, and in one breath, they have become the enemy all of a sudden because they've decided oh, to go no, to another no, no, political no. party. No, 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 no. Nobody said, nobody said they were the enemy. I just said political power seekers. I didn't say enemy. There are no, we don't have any enemies uh, within the political space. We might contend on political issues and ideology, but we're not enemies. We are brothers and we're sisters. We are fellow citizens of Nigeria. We don't, there's no enmity within the Nigerian family. Not, not from our perspective. But the thing is this. Now, it makes you wonder, look, are we better off today? Is Nigeria better off today than it was four years, five years ago? 
when you know was is, it, is Nigeria better off today than it was in 2014, 2015, when the PDP was in power? Now, even if that is contentious and even if that is arguable, the bottom line is this: Do we have enough reasons to support APC in power any longer? Obviously not. The APC came to power with very, very specific reasons, uh, specific mandates. Uh, uh, one was uh, the security to, to secure lives and property. Two was the economic recovery. And three was cor uh, uh, corruption, to fight corruption. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm sure that anybody across Nigeria will agree with me that they have not succeeded on any one of those. And that on any of those three... Well, they but they uh, will argue uh, with you that they have. They will tell you that they have been able to do this, that, and that. I mean, I remember talking to an APC representative on this show, and he said that the country is better off now than it was under the PDP. Oh, really? Well, I mean, that's a matter of opinion. And, you know, everybody has an opinion, you know. But uh, I can tell you one thing for free. You know, uh, the average man on the street does not believe so. You have seen the NSAS riots, the NSAS uh, protests, and you know that those things, uh, that, 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 that protest almost went out of control. It almost became uh, uh, what you would call a fight for democracy. People had already started asking for the president to resign. It was no longer an end to police brutality. It had become, a, you know, uh, uh, a question of, of the systematic uh, or the systemic rule of the APC. And we're seeing that everywhere. I mean, you look at what they're trying to do with, with the, ban on, on, uh, the ban on Twitter, which is basically to try and restrict uh, the free flow of, of information and, and uh, expression, uh, free expression of, of, of uh, independent opinion. That's what they're trying to do. And we're beginning to see that more and more. And so anyone who tells me now that people are moving to the APC because it is a progressive party is not necessarily true. They're not progressive. The APC is no longer progressive. It is, it is basically what you would call, uh, 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 well, a retrogressive party. They're but, no longer progressive. But call it whatever you may, and I'm not in any way, I'm not a spokesperson for the APC either, um, but your party members are moving, and it's not just one, not two, they're moving to the APC, the same party that you are saying uh, is retrogressing, is not doing or has not fulfilled its promises. But then members of your political party are going there in their numbers, and not just at the national level, but at the state level. So there has to be something in that party, or there's something that they're doing right that is attracting members of your political party. For whatever reason. No, no, the one, sorry, sorry. The one thing that they've got right, the one thing that they've got, not they've got right, the one thing they've got is that they're in, part, in power. And for a very long time, Nigerian politicians have always gravitated to the center of power. One of the reasons why people are asking for restructuring. So if you restructure, the center of power is no longer in Abuja, but across the different states uh, where, you know, federating units. And people do no longer have to co to the center. That's one of the things. Now, and then there's a, there, there are also a whole lot of situations. Um, I hate to bring this, this, this up, but there are a whole lot of situations where you see governors who have done first terms want a second term. And they think that federal might will bring them into, will give them a second term. That, that, that is what they think. We've proven them wrong in Edo State. We've proven them wrong in Edo State. That, uh, that, that doesn't necessarily have to be. Now, another thing is this. If you look at what they, what they consider as the, as the, the, the winning formula uh, of what you'd call uh, short-sighted, short myopic uh, politicians who think that because uh, the APC controls the federal government right now, that APC will win the next election, all they have to do is to look at 2015 and see for themselves what happened. And I can tell you one thing, another, another thing for free. I told you one thing for free before. I'll tell you another one thing for free. The Nigerian public will decide the next, the next uh, 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 elections. I'm going, to put, I'm, go, I'm, go, I'm, going to, I'm going to put a pin there and come back to talk about the Nigerian people deciding the next election. But let me go back to Wano CK. Um, he raised issues about the APC and, um, you know, it being retrogressive, but I, I, still, I, I still see people moving to the party. But I, this is what, where I'm going now. The governor of your state seemed to be one of those who uh, were asking that the 
party chairman resign. But I remember years ago when Mr. Secondus was about to, you know, assume power, he supported him. He, he stood by him. But then all of a sudden, the governor of River State, um, uh, Governor Wike's name, keeps coming up. And, and many have... Uh, there have been whispers in certain quarters that he probably uh, is angling for something. So I ask you directly, what is your governor angling for? Is he trying to run for something? What is his interest in Mr. Secundus' chairmanship? First of all, let's take it one after the other. You raised uh, some issues, so let's, let's take them one after the other. Governor um, Boyes, which is a good fish, he has no hiding place. So if people talk about him, he's expected. We are proud of him. We are proud of his achievements. We are proud that River State has sought body like the boy so we get to present to the Nigerian people at the appropriate time. That is not the basis of this discussion. The boy so we get is a member of the People's Democratic Party. And he needs the vehicle called People's Democratic Party to be able to translate his aspirations, his wishes, his ideas, his programs and policies, and policies to the people of Nigeria. That is the only vehicle that he can say he will used to say, look, you knew when we were in power. This was not what we were doing. We lost power. These people came in, said they solve problems that they will solve. Now, have they been able to solve the problem? No. What are they using? They are blackmailing and cajoling people to come to their party. Of course, we know weak vessels are those who have gone to their party and we don't want to bother ourselves with that. 2023 will decide if they have the capacity to manage the fortune of their state or not, when that time comes, we we'll cross that bridge. But in concentrating in what we are discussing, anybody say we can, is saying, yes, there's nothing wrong with me supporting you to come to power. But if the idea that we use in supporting you is not achieved, then what is the essence in support is staying in that support? Anybody say we can, is not a spirit, he's a human being. He has the right to say, look, I think this man can do well. But if the man gets there and has issues, that is not confirming with his aspirations and with what he believes that the party should be doing as a party he belongs to. Uh, he has the right to say, no, we will bring new blood. We will bring new set of people to be able to reposition this our political party so that we can have a credible vehicle to be able to transmit our ideas and tell Nigerian people, yes, there's a problem that has been created by the President Buhari APC led administration. We are here to solve that problem. We, the People's Democratic Party, give us this confidence. We have the structure, the 774 local governments in Nigeria. We have the ideas to be able to rebrand Nigeria and make Nigeria the true giant of Africa. We want. What we thank God to do that, which Osokondus himself has come to agree that yes, we will work together. Let's do this convention in October rather than wait till December and let's be able to reposition our party to be able to get this job done for the Nigerian people. And we all are working together now. So I think we need to move forward. Let's, let's talk about, um, you know, the issue, uh, issues that have been raised um, against Mr. Secundus. He has even responded saying that so far all of these allegations that he's heard, none of it has really warranted his resignation. And, and, and of course, his, his time in office is yet to expire. So I'm still really wondering why everybody's pushing. If there's a problem in the party, the party should fix it. Should it be, a, I mean, if cha changing a person and putting another person, because you said it wasn't about Uche Secundus. But now, if you're ta saying take Mr. Secundus after the picture, and you bring another person, is that really going to heal the party? Will that bring an immediate solution to the party? I also want to understand why the PDP as a party, uh, many have com uh, concluded that the PDP has not been able to play its part as a viable opposition to the APC uh, since the APC came into power in 2015. And here we are in 2021, the PDP is still struggling to put its party together. It, it's... it's and now we see it looking like a house divided against itself. How formidable can the PDP be come 2023 if in 2021 we're still having to deal with issues like this? Okay, now look at, you know, even in this discussion we're having now, you, have used, you, you, you yourself as a presenter have answered part of the question. You just said now that the PDP has we have... Uh, I think today. you... The PDP okay. as we have today, hello, the PDP as we have today have not been positioned to be able to 
convince Nigerians that they can be able to correct the mistakes of this present administration. So that is enough reason why members and leaders of the party are saying, please, don't worry. Let's work together. Let's be able to produce a credible executive that can be able to wrestle power from these people. Whether you like it or not, Nigerians are expecting PDP to come with a clean, clear programs and policies, a clear alternative to what the PC is doing, that they can be able to touch, they can be able to hold, they can be able to are see. You sure that not just are you sure that Nigerians are expecting anything from the PDP anymore because they've not really seen the PDP play the Inclu opposition? Including you, inclu in including you, who is even asking this question, in your deepest of heart, you know that you're expecting Nigerians because it's not even not so good for even you that is even asking I didn't, this question. I didn't know that you could read minds. No, but it's the truth. How can we live in a nation where even you cannot even travel on road from one uh, set of journey to another, where you sleep with all your eyes open? A nation where you're not sure of what the economy policy of the nation will be tomorrow and what is the dream anybody's chasing, chasing this nation. A nation that all our qualified people are living this country, we're having brain drains today as we speak. Resident doctors are still having issues. People are dying in our hospital. A nation that has no program and policy, all we have is lies and intimidation. See, the truth of the matter is that Nigerians have made up their mind. Go and check what's happening in the registration, the INEC registration. Young people are getting registered to say, we don't want to protest in the street again. We want to protest with our vote come 2023. And that is why the APC is scared. That is why they have to go to the National Assembly to maneuver the process to stop Clause 52 in the Electoral Act so that they can be able to stop the issue of transmitting results from the polling units. They know that Nigerians have made up their mind. But your PDP members were APC also back. part of the Senate. Your mem members of your party were also part of those who's, who said no to the electronic transmission of results. So you can't really hit this at the table well, of the APC, can you? No, 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 hold on. Who is in charge of the, the, the both houses? Well, it doesn't matter. Who? If your party wants no, to it it matters it matters itself, Let me tell you. we shouldn't when see members people, of the PDP when, on that when list. The People's Democratic Party, when the People's Democratic Party was rejigging the electoral act, they were rejigging the electoral act in a positive direction. Under the People's Democratic Party, they brought in the cadre there. Of course. So we are saying that if you have the majority and you want Nigeria to move on, you know, civil society, entire Nigerians, are saying, we want to save the life of INEC workers. We want to save the life of security agents on election. We want to save the lives of reporters like you on election day. We want to save the lives of voters. We don't want the issue of hijacking of results, rewriting results as coalition centers. Let the true reflection of the votes of the people that are casted at the polling unit be what will come to the INEC summer. Okay. That's what we're saying. All right. Back to you, um... Mr. Ogoigwa, let's go back to that thing we put a pin on. You talked about the fact that the people's vote will um, decide in 2023. But I just want to talk about a litmus test. For example, let me use Lagos State. Uh, a few weeks ago, we had local government polls. The polling units were virtually empty. Just a handful of people were there. There seems to be, I mean, we could call it whatever. Some people are saying that there's voter apathy. It's really, some people are saying that, you know, they're having, um, you know, a brain drain. There's so many ways to describe the low turnout for, you know, the elections here in Lagos State. And Lagos is the economic capital of Nigeria. I mean, talk more about other parts of the country. If you are so certain that the voters will decide in 2023, we're supposed to start now to understand their mindset, and their mindset is what we saw in Lagos local government elections. Except you can convince me, um, you know, on the opposing side. Oh, I think that um, we have lost that connection with uh, um, Greg Ogoigua. Let's come back to you, um, Wanasike. So I'm going to ask that same question to you. If the voters are going to decide, I'm sure you heard my question, so if you can attempt it. People seem not Hello? to care. Uh, any okay. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, I, I can hear you. I Did heard you hear my question. question? All right, go ahead. Yes, I heard your question about Lagos State local government elections. Now, two things. First of all, local government elections are under state, uh, under state laws. Um, so first of all, it's the Lagos Independent uh, Electoral Commission that conducts the elections there, not um, the Independent National Electoral Commission. 
but that's, it's, but there's still elections. Thing. There's still elections. People still show up at polling units yeah, to yeah, cast yeah, their vote. Yes, yeah. yeah. I, I just pointed one thing out to you. One is general. The yeah. other one is call my mom. Call my mom. Minute. Minute. They call me a new program. Okay, go uh, ahead. Chairman, your mom, your mom, will cook a good shift for us to chop for this program. Go <laughs> ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go go. Uh, now the next one, the next one is this. You see, not voting at an election or not participating in, at an election is also a statement. It's also an action. It's an electoral action. There is participation and non-participation. For example, if you have anything less than maybe 40% participation at an election, then you know that it is not totally uh, 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 participatory. The generality of the public or the generality of the voting public do not necessarily mandate or endorse that government, even if they have won the elections. If the number of people, the number, the number of, of, of the voting uh, 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 citizenry are less in, in, in proportion than ought to be. So there's a standard that, by which you can say that, okay, if 35% of the, of the voting population don't vote, I mean, I have voted only 35% of the voting population voted, then you have 65% who did not vote, who have also made a statement. And that statement at times is what you call the silent majority. You understand what I'm saying? So the fact that uh, uh, Lagos State, uh, they, they had what you would call some sort of slight uh, uh, victory for the, power, for the party in power in Lagos, and you had a majority of the people that did not vote, it tells you one thing, they did, you know, that uh, 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 not voting, is negative. Is a negative vote. But then it the APC, the APC wasn't just the only party that vied for that election. And let's not forget. Let's not even play this down yeah. in any way. Local government elections, right. whether we like it or not, are the most important elections in any populace. It's the most important because that's the closest government to the people. Even though these days in Nigeria, local yeah, government they're elections they're are they're sham. They're but they're yeah, it's very important. And and to, yeah. and to totally jettison the uh, the idea that it cannot be a, a litmus test, I have a problem with that. But again, let's let's be fair to 2019 no, election. No, 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 just hold on, hold on, I'm coming. Let me just let me just let me just drop this point. Let's go back to 2019. It's not. I mean, we can't really quickly forget 2019 because it's just a few years ago. Uh, the 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 level of the number of people who showed up to the polling units was not up to. 100% or if 70% of the people who registered for that same election. So we're still talking no, no, no. I, I about the issue I of voter was, apathy. Was, exactly. I think it was, it was less than 60%. It was exactly. Well than 60%. Exactly my point. So if in 20, 2019 we had that low turnout for general elections, and then I mean, you're just using mm -hmm. Lagos here as a test for you know, local elections, and we saw almost mm -hmm. empty polling units with sometimes one voter. Yeah. Of course, this yeah. says a lot. It means, yeah, it means we had that the people PDP, that we had the white people, we had so many other parties there. So we can't really say because the APC, uh, people didn't show up, so it's, it's, it's a bad light for the APC. The PDP members also were vying well, for those offices. I didn't say it was a bad light for the APC. I said it was a bad thing for the political system, for the system itself. It but, means that people no longer believe that the system will throw up the leaders that 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 they vote for. It means that they no longer believe in the electoral system. People believe that even if they, that their votes won't count, no matter who they vote for. You remember what happened in Lagos over the last ele during the last elections. Mm -hmm. You know, we saw that very clearly. There was a lot of violence and everything. And a whole lot of people felt that, 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 that their votes just won't count, no matter what it is. And it happens in state elections, at, at the local government election. I know that you said that local government elections are the most crucial. They ought to be. They ought to be, but they are not. They are not the most crucial because local government elections are just uh, what you would call uh, jara, you know, for whoever it is that wins the states. Local governments are just jara. You will take every single local government that you wish. So you just simply write the, the names of the local government chairman and the councillors, and you've got them all. Now, but the thing is this. So you're it's saying. So you're that saying that what you call you're that? telling me that one of CK's of one of CK's election was a sham. That we, I mean, that the parties in power just, you know, decide who would win. Is that what you're saying? 
Yeah, they do it all the time. I and mean, you know, anybody who says it's not true should come and argue it anywhere. Wanna no, see do you, you care to you do you care to respond? Hold because on, hold on, hold on, this puts on, your one, one, this puts three. your local hold government up, election please. and your winning in an Ikoria local government area to question. No, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't I am I am I am waiting, I am waiting, I am waiting for my opportunity to respond. When that opportunity comes, I will respond. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. And I don't know the particulars. And I believe that, you know, from Austin, what I've read about it, Yeah, I'm, I don't know the particulars. But from what you have described and from what you have spoken, as, as you have spoken, you are pretty articulate and you probably know your people very well. So I will not say 100%, 100% that the elections, local government elections are, 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 are a sham. I won't say so. I participated in them myself. So I wouldn't say 100% that they are, but I can tell you that majority and, you know, majority. So let's say 90%. But going further, I do, I, what I want to point out is that what you call apathy is not necessarily apathy. It could be a negative, what you would call uh, negative energy, a resentment that has some sort of energy. Because when people re refuse to vote, when people stop voting, then they are preparing for revolution. When okay. they stop voting, when they stop, when they stop believing in the electoral system, when they stop believing in power by ballot by the ballot box, then they are preparing for power by any means necessary. Okay. So it, when you say apathy, apathy is a wrong word to describe the mood of Nigerians. I don't think that they're apathetic. I think that you are seeing Nigerians becoming more aggressive and beginning to become. Uh, are beginning to think that, look, okay, look, if government cannot protect us, if they cannot provide for us, we better think about these things ourselves, whether it is at local government level, state level, or regional level, you know, thereabouts. Okay. So, Mr. Wojcicki, don't take it, don't get it oh, wrong. Oh, come on, let the that, man uh, speak. Uh, let the man here. speak. Um, Mr. Samuel uh, Wanusike, your elections have been called to question. Our local government's elections across Nigeria sham. And this is not the first time that people have questioned local government elections. There are state governors who have for a long time decided not to have local government elections, and they have stayed that way. But you uh, are a two-time local government chairman for Equerry, uh, and I, I want to know... Well, first of all... Um, yeah, go ahead. First of all, um, to my brother, who is on the other side of... Um, this program, I have no, I hold no, no, no issue against him. Uh, he's entitled to his opinion. That's why he's a living being. Um, in River State, we practice clear cut democracy, and I know even you as the reporter, you followed our local government election process. You even interviewed me in this station as regards the local government election. Now, I want to say clearly, in River State, we participate based on the wishes of the people. If you're not popular in River State, you win the election. If the people don't believe that you have the capacity to provide the dividends of democracy, they won't vote for you. If you understand the way the people of River State think politically, you will know that there are people who believe in practical activities. They don't believe in wishful promises or storytelling. Now, I have been Given the opportunity, this is the second time and I'm elected local government chairman in my local government. And the records are there to show for itself that I have delivered the dividends of democracy to the people of equal local government in all spheres. Call it in agriculture, call it in education, call it in security, call it in, uh, in, uh, in works, infrastructure. I have projects littered on the 13 political world in my local government. I've rebuilt the local government headquarters to the MV of all. I'm building an international meat market in conjunction with NDDC. I am building projects in all the all the political works you know in the local government. And I'm making sure that the people of the local government have the full taste of democracy. Okay. I have a question. Now, talking about Lagos State, hold on before you ask your question. Talking about the election in Lagos State and the message the people of Lagos State have sent to the government of Lagos State, which you know is the ABC-led administration. What you have seen, if you go and just oppose with the online administration going on today, you will know that the people of Lagos State have just told the Lagos State government, the government that wait for us in 2023. 
We are not interested in this your local government process. We are interested in 2023. That is why we are registering. And in Lagos, we will show you that the current APC cannot hold Lagos State in 2023. That is what that message is clearly. So you're pointing fingers to you're, you're pointing fingers to the APC, who's you know at the helm of affairs when it comes to the state level. Uh, of course, go the governor is an APC member, and so you're saying that by by virtue, uh, you know, the party runs the state. But I want to ask you a direct question. I, I I hope you can answer. If the PDP was not in power in River State, if Governor Nyesonwike was not your principal in La in River State, would you be Equator, Equator Local Government Chairman? Do you think you would stand a chance to win that position as Local Government Chairman? Do you think that well, all those people... Because I know that the River State, every single person who occupies a Local Government Office right now is a member of the People's Democratic Party. Well, let me, uh, let, 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 let me just answer you. Let, yes. let me answer you. Let me answer you. Straight and direct. The people of the local government decide who will govern them. In fact, even in this People's Democratic Party that I belong to, the greatest opposition I faced, we are my party members. They are the actual people who gave me their opposition in my quest to come back as the chairman of council. I am saying, so, if it was the, the APC the, oh, that was leading your state, do you think that they would let a, a PDP person win in any local government election? Good the point I'm making, the point I'm making, the, the point I'm making is that if it's the it's APC yes no. that's leading River State, hold on. If it's the APC that's leading River State, and APC conducts a credible election at the local government level, one of the cases someone will win. So why are, why are APC, APC members not? Today, why on. have APC it's members APC not won in any local government area in River State? Or any APC other political party. It doesn't even have to APC be the APC. APC. Hold on. APC didn't contest the election. You know. So let's talk about that. APC was. So what about the other political parties? What about the other the election. Parties? The the other political party. The, the point we are making is that you don't just sit down in the comfort of your bedroom and say, two days the election. You got three posts and say you want to come around the election. There must be track records. We have a leader that is in a party that have transformed River State, that have turned River State to a construction site. Let's suppose it's a weekend as. Show you what people capacity leadership, and everybody in River State is talking about his party, and so that is an advantage of but his own. But is not but running for local government. Nobody's no, no, voting understand. for Yeshua Mike to listen, walk listen, at the local you. government level. The, okay, no, hold on. <laughs> let me even tell you. Let me tell you. If if the if Buhari, if President Muhammad Buhari, federal government have done well, <laughs> APC <laughs> would have pride in APC as a party to run in the election. The problem why people are afraid of running an election under APC today is because the government at the center who made so much promises has failed. The, the, the president, what the point I'm trying to make to you, that the river state is the boys who are done well are the leader of the party, and that's why PDP is the shining light. So the major fight you have in the political party at the local government level in River State is that it's an inter-party issue. I'm sorry, well, just, hold, just hold on, Mr. Wanda. Mr. Gongwa, please. Um, can you minimize the sounds coming from your end, please, so we can hear our other guests? Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm yes. sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Wanasike. Okay, the point I'm making is that because the leader of the party have led the party right, the party has not been placed in a position of interest. Everybody is interested in PDP. Oh, that party that is doing very well, we will follow them at the local government level. They will do more at local government level. And I know in our first term in office, a lot of my colleagues worked so hard to also grow the party at the local government level. I worked so hard to grow the party at the local government. I didn't go to the local government level and become a liability or become a disgrace to my party. I went there and I showed them. Uh, I think we lost the connection there. That, that's the point I'm making. Again. No, the point I'm making is that it's a boy so we can have provided that we needed leadership. Okay. If President Muhammad Buhari had succeeded, APC would have been flying high in Nigeria. But today, in the three point in which he campaigned and came to office, he felt woefully in all the trade. So okay. Absolutely. Will people be looking at APC? Well, we'll take Absolutely. it. We'll take That's why they're trying to look for corners to be able to hold on to power. But let me tell you, like my colleague have said, the people of Nigeria will shock them. Okay. How many are they? There are less than that many people. Okay. Don't worry. They will learn from the loss of Jonathan in 2023. Don't All worry. Right. We'll, we'll take a quick break. And when we come back, we're still talking about the crisis in the PDP and how the PDP plans to claw itself out of this whole take a short break. And we'll be right back.